All right. <clears throat> well, I will start us off in a very, very brief word of prayer. And I ask Father God in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a good time tonight in the word. I thank you, Lord, for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. I thank you, Father, for the things that uh, will be very relative to what we need to know moving forward and being effective, reaching people, touching those that are around us that may not understand why we love you so much. And I pray, Father God, that tonight there's something that we can gain that we may not have had before. Whatever that is, we thank you for it now because it will aid us to be stronger. It will aid us, Father God, in being more effective. And so I thank you for helping us to be more effective and stronger in our relationship with you. For that, I give you all the praise and the honor and the glory as we press forward in the name of Jesus. And everybody that agree with that prayer can say amen. 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 All right. Well, tonight, this is the first Tuesday of May, the second Tuesday of May, which means that we are into the uh, CFA IWS, the Eyewitness School. And um, just as I prayed, I look for us to become a stronger witness, a living witness, because there's something that we can say we've seen and we can share what we've seen with somebody that has seen nothing, maybe. And uh, as a matter of fact, before I get started, uh, is there anyone that would like to share anything uh, in terms of reaching someone that um, you've been ministering to? Any any testimonies on this? Good afternoon. Good testimony. evening. This is Sister Bruce. Uh -oh. <laughs> After you. <laughs> no, go ahead. You go ahead. I want to hear you first. All right. We're on the highway right now, going on down 95, going back to Delaware. I've been in Jersey for several days. But yesterday I had an experience. Of course, we fellowshiped on Sunday with you, even though it was um, via um, YouTube or whatever. Yeah. And the word was profound until I had to listen to it again. And then it was about witnessing and about the Holy Ghost. Okay, we all know, all right. So yesterday I go to the doctor's office. Everything's cool. I'm meeting with a gastroenterologist who I just fell in love with. Anyway, good reports. Nothing's wrong so Amen. far. Amen. And then I go outside into the waiting room. And there's a lady in behind the counter with pink hair. And I'm smiling, which I usually do. <laughs> anyway, she says, oh, my. I said, what's the matter? She said, you're a good person. I said, a good person? Really? She said, no, no. I'm getting a vibe from you. You know, I'm a reader. I said, are you? <laughs> you're like, I'm not afraid of that. that and I'm saying, Pastor Jeff, <laughs> I'm crying here. <laughs> and so she's talking. And I said, you said something. And. I said, oh, my God. She said, what's the matter? I said, you're hurt. You're hurting so bad. And tears came in my eyes. And this lady bawled. I mean, oh, it was, I mean, she cried so hard. I said, baby, give me your hands. And when she gave me her hand, she said, my God. I said, what's the matter? She said, you're a good person. I said, no, <laughs> I'm trying to be a good person. I said, but you see that eye you have on your neck? It has done nothing for you. And so I rebuke every spirit that has come to try to tell you that you need something other than Jesus Christ in your life. I said, I searched like you did. And I said, don't Amen. be afraid of what I'm saying. And she said, mm. I'm not afraid, but I got to stop praying. I said, nobody's going to come in right now. I said, but we're going to pray, okay? And I said, I'm going to ask God to come into your life because you're here in New York and I'm down in Delaware. You know where I'm at. I said, but I know that God can reach you wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And that peace that you need, he could give it to you more than anything else that you've been searching for. You love hard and you get hurt hard. 
I said, but God is going to soothe your heart. And we prayed. She was looking for the other lady who was sitting there and got up when we started touching hands and the lady disappeared. And she kept looking for us. Don't look for her. She's not coming back. I said, this is a time where God is going to meet you. And it was so sweet. And her name is, mm, I got to tell you what her name is, because we got to keep her lifted up. Her last yes. name is Rodriguez, but her first name is, uh, she wrote it down. Then she asked me to meet her, and then she couldn't get to that place where she asked me to meet her at. Mm. Ooh, it's E-L-I-C-C. -C. Mm. I can't find it right now. Anyway, the last name is, I call her Sister Rodriguez. Okay. And that's what I'm for her. But I asked God tonight, and I've asked him ever since I met her, meet her, Dad. Meet her where I can't be there for her right now. Right. Meet her right. with another body, another seed being planted. Yes. Water it, Dad. Amen. Bring her yes, in. Lord. And she's so sweet. She was so hurt, though. When I touched her hands, I felt such pain, such hurt. And I'm yes. just saying to you, you know, yeah. like, I'm lifting her up because, man, she touched me. I mean, she touched me not to forget to pray for her. And Amen. so I'm asking Amen. you to lift up Sister Rodriguez. She's going to be okay because God's got her. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to tell you that. And I, I was laughing. I said, Pastor Jeff just said you could cast them out. You could tell them to leave, but they may come back. But all I did was find them. I bound them in the name of Jesus, sent them to the pits of hell, and asked God Amen. to fill that place quick. Fill it yes. quick, Dad. Don't wait a in minute. Just fill it, Dad, in the name of Jesus. And, yes, and that Lord. was my testimony. Thank you, Pope. Her name is, her first name is E L E C C I S S. Alessi, Alessi, I guess. Somebody help me. E L E C C I S S. Martinez, not Rodriguez. Martinez. Let me get it straight. Okay, I got it. Well, anyway, God knows who she is. And um, I just thank God for that doctor's visit. <laughs> Amen. 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 Is it, is it Alicia? Spell it again. E L E C C I S S. Alexis. Alexis. Alexis Martinez. Yeah, and she kept saying, "I'm I'm ugly. Look at my hair." And I said, "No, baby, it's not about your hair. It's about your heart. You're beautiful." You're wonderful. You're a phenomenal woman. Don't ever let anybody tell you different. And she said, oh, my God, you this light. You're so you're warm. You're I said, you're warm, too. <laughs> and I said, don't let my hand go. Come on, let me pray. And she said, yeah, pray. <laughs> <laughs> God is good. God is good. Wow. Anyway, Hallelujah. I got excited. <laughs> That's That's exciting. Glad you shared that. And Kimberly, you wanted to say something? Yes, I definitely enjoyed uh, when Sister Ruth just shared. But yeah, I this is a combination of sharing the word and also the prayer list that we have and that we keep praying over. Um, mm -hmm. My sons, both of them, definitely Jeremiah, um, they've been really seeking the Lord, you know, having their own personal Bible studies. And oh. Nathaniel's girlfriend and um, Jeremiah's fiance are really seeking after the Lord and they're, they're bringing them like they're saying, come on, let's go to Bible. Let's do Bible study. You know, so the girls are actually um, pushing the boys to do it. So I'm just be quiet. No, it's not a good time to bark. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm just, I'm amazed by that. Cause you know, it's just, it's just little sharing of the word here and there, you know, and, and uh, they're, the girls are the, their wife, his fiance and Nathaniel's girlfriend just wants to do Bible study all the time. And it's just amazing how both of them want to do that. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Prayers, God is answering our prayers. Yeah, he definitely is. Yes. He is. Amen. Well, <clears throat> we had these two testimonies. I might as well ask, is there a third one that somebody would like to share? I got a chance to share to four people today. Yeah. Uh, also, um, the curiosity, and, and I've always said that a lot of people that don't know God, 
there will always be curious to, to why you are kind of different, why you don't sound like the normal <laughs> other people, the way they talk and the way they carry themselves. Uh, sometimes the, the people that are not Christian will read us like a book. And I want them, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I want them to read me as a proper book. I want them to know that it's the Bible that they're trying to read and not, you know. And and, and I had uh, one lady and two gentlemen that I was working with today. Uh, they We got into the conversation. And, of course, God is always going to be in my conversation no matter what. So we, I started witnessing <laughs> to them. And uh, they're all Hispanics. And one of the gentlemen that I witnessed to, he was really touched. So uh, uh, me and him will continue the conversation. The other, the other people were also uh, curious about my testimony and things that I was telling them about my past life and where I'm at now and how I love God and everything else. And then I stopped to buy some chicken uh, to bring home to l- earlier today. And uh, there at the chicken place was a lady named Beth. Uh, suffered from breast cancer, had a, a, a removal, uh, and she was really struggling. Uh, she was asking for a dollar, but uh, uh, once I got out and bought, I went ahead and I stayed there for about 15 minutes with her, and I just stayed with her, ministered with her, talked to her about God, prayed for her, and like Sister Ruth was saying, she started bawling. She started crying. She says, wow. out of all this time, I said that I've been here begging I have never had one single person actually take time to just to get to know what's going on in my life. I thank you so much. I said, oh. that's God. That's the love of God. I said, that's all, you know, and she, she started telling me all about, about her situation where she's, you know, living and where she's not living and the fact that she had breast cancer and, and everything else. But, you know, sometimes that's all people want is just somebody to talk to for a minute. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that, that to me felt stronger Besides being able to witness to God, but felt I really felt the need in her to be able to communicate. She just wanted to talk to somebody. Yeah. And uh, so that was just a blessing to me. So I was able to do that and share that with her. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. These, these these are very good things. Very, very great to hear. Amen. Amen. Well look, let's let's consider what we've heard here. And um, I wanted, you see, I'm, I've got a scripture that's already loaded here This in Romans chapter 11. And it was to remind us that uh, as we're progressing through the month of May, um, to not forget about praying, not just for your friends, families, relatives, co-workers, neighbors, the people that you know, but maybe some of the people that you don't know that might be of a whole nation of Israel. Amen. <laughs> There's a, I wanted to say that there is this, this large effort right now uh, for the next few weeks to really take some time and be praying for Israel. And, uh, and we're reminded, uh, as we uh, looked through the scriptures a couple of weeks ago, or really, I think it was last week, maybe it was the week before, but I said, don't forget about Israel. Mm-hmm. And um, here in Romans chapter 10, chapter 11, mm-hmm. In chapter 9, you have Paul reminding us or explaining to us why Israel was very important to God and that the only reason that we're in, well, maybe not the only reason, but the <laughs> reason that we're in is because they rejected the truth. And I want to reflect back here in Romans chapter 11, looking at verse 20. It says, um, talking about Israel and why they were rejected, it says, well, Verse 20, chapter 11 of Romans, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Mm -hmm. Stand this by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also uh, spare not thee. But behold, therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity. But towards thee, goodness... If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. And he says here in verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be 
wise in your own conceits. In other words, we're so caught up in ourselves as being Christians, we don't care about what's happening with Israel. And the, and the scripture is telling us, do not do that. Don't do that. It says, uh, be not wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. And how will they be saved? It's going to be through the intercession of the church. It's going to be through the intercession of the church. These things are written. And we'll say, well, God's written it. And we already know how this ends. But we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. Just like you've taken on the responsibility of praying for people that you really care about, the way that you get into the kingdom is that you're praying for people. It's a funny thing that when you come into the kingdom of God, the, one of the first things that we want to do is make sure that we're taken care of. And so God will take care of you as an individual. But we can't stay only preoccupied with ourselves because what God is going to do is begin to demand that we mature and that we grow in love and we see beyond ourselves, beyond our own narcissistic selves and we begin to understand that the reason that Jesus went to the cross was for the sin of the whole world. His image and his uh, modeling, if you will, was that he sacrificed himself for the whole world. When he came into the world, he did not do really anything for himself. And for us, this is why the scripture tells us to take up our cross daily and follow after him. And if we will not pick up our cross and follow after him, he says we cannot be his disciples. So my emphasis is that yes, it's wonderful that each one of us has our salvation. We independently have a relationship with the Lord, but we collectively see the value of the corporate body and we must see the value of reaching beyond ourselves to touch people that are lost. And so as we're doing that, do not do not forget about Israel. Now, I want to say something that's even more specific. Um, if I come back over into, into Isaiah for a second. And, and Ruth and, um, and, and everyone else, really. But, but Ruth gave us that detailed breakdown of talking to this woman and the effect that it had on her. And the scripture tells us here, and I'm saying this for, for all of us, God wants to give us all this. It says in verse 4, this is Isaiah 50, the Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that, and that lady was hurting, right? To him that is weary. The scripture says, He waketh morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as the learn. The Lord hath opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. This is prophetically speaking about Jesus, but it's also speaking about you. As those that have received the spirit of the Lord Jesus, and he still wants to do the same work through you. This comes back to us learning how to rest in him, but let him do the work through us, and we not be in rebellious and turning away from the work that he puts right in front of us. So... <clears throat> He can give each one of us th that tongue of the learned. And if, we'll, and if we'll respond to that, I know this is the Old Testament, so just to show you something in the New Testament, we're going to go to chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. Uh, uh, 1 C-O-R 14. And we're going to drop down here. And... Uh, <clears throat> Oh, yes, verse 18, I think, my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Yes, that's good. However, um, let me see if I can get this to come up here. All right. Um, there, if somebody is, is trying to know God 
And the scripture tells us that if somebody comes into our company, one of the things that Paul is doing in this 14th chapter, he's correcting the church, he's correcting the church of Corinth on some abusive things they were doing with tongues. But if they will do this right, he said, well, in verse 23, he said, If therefore the whole church come together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say you are all mad? Because we're talking in these tongues, and it doesn't make any sense to the people that don't know why or what that's about or what it's doing for anyone. But prophecy, that's the thing. To learn to speak prophetically, and you're stoked to speak prophetically because you give time to pray in tongues. Both are inspired language that comes out of you. One is a language that's between you and God, and you don't know what you're saying, but it is helping your weaknesses. It's helping those areas of your life that you don't know need attention or preparing you for circumstances down the road that you may run into and you may have been unprepared, but because you prayed in the spirit, prayed in tongues, it built you up and got you ready for something that you didn't know you'd be encountering. So, one of the things that happens though in the in one of the speaking gifts, if you'll if you'll trust God further with things that come out of your mouth, then you'll begin to prophesy. And the scripture says in verse twenty four, but if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not or is unlearned, let me just jump this up a little bit, or is unlearned, he is convinced of all or convicted, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. That's what we really want. We, we all can have the, the Ruth experience. <laughs> amen, amen. So, um... Let me ask this question, just to generate a little bit more dialogue. Uh, has Pastor it, Jeff? Yes. I, I just wanted to say one other thing. When she told me that she was a reader, I smiled and I said, okay, but when I started revealing certain things, she said, how do you know that? How did you, who, how did you know that about me? And I said, it was revealed to me, but not but not through the spirit of this world, but from the spirit of the Lord. And I said, the Lord will speak to you. You don't need that hand or that, that evil eye to ward off. God will be your protector. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the conversations that we had. It was quite a few, but it was, the, I don't know what happened. She never came. I, I never could go back to her. And so all I could do was pray. But let me just interject one more thing. Another part of the testimony was in the prayer group that I've been for the last 12 years in the morning at between 4 and 6 a.m., maybe 7 a.m., depending on how long the intercession goes. One of the things that I've been allowed to do was talk about the Holy Spirit. Some received, remember, there's a lot of denominations in this group, and that's okay. I don't care how God meets them, just as long as God meets them and it's the real God. Yeah. Anyway. I've been able to be a midwife, more or less, to speak. That's what I call it, to tell you about the scriptures and what the Holy Spirit does and blah, 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 and so and so. And, and some have taken it on, which is really great. When you preached on Sunday, I was so excited that I hit the head minister of this group. And I said, if you feel led after looking at this, from Pastor Jeff or Jeff, however you want to call him, because he's going to tell you that. I said, you might want to share it with the group. Before that, the week before or two weeks ago, I shared, I went online and looked up this, the prayer that we're doing for Israel. Yeah. And I sent it to them as well. And I said, if you're interested in this, it would be good because we've been praying for Israel every week. But now we can pray for them every day until, you know, May 28th. <laughs> she sent both of those things out. I saw a hit on them looking at the YouTube of your 
of your lesson on Sunday. And now, praise God, since May 7th, we have incorporated Israel in the prayer every day. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. God, <laughs> the glory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Well, very good. Very good. So, um, all right. Well, let me say this and then I'm open. Am I the only one that can't hear anything? I can't hear. Okay, let's make sure. I can't hear. <laughs> I can't hear either. Me either. Yeah, Me mute yourself, Pastor. Um, I'm mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 That's very. Yeah. Well. You must have went in and out. It didn't. Uh, it didn't show that I had muted, but I hit it anyway. Okay, you can hear me now. Yes. yes. Good, good. Yes, uh, we can. Okay. So what I was going to ask is how many of you have heard of this thing called the, uh, it's used in evangelism, but it's called the four spiritual laws. You ever heard of that before? The four spiritual laws. No. Okay. I can tell by the silence. That, that, that that's something but, well I say this you're not missing a lot but this is a very basic tool that people use when they're on the street evangelizing and they want to convey this message and I've got right here if you look on the left side of my screen right by Isaiah 50 verse 4 you want to impact people's lives and I was and, and I've got here moving prophetically expanding the four evangelistic spiritual laws and and that's if you know them so what they are the four spiritual laws are this let me just start with one and uh, let me see Jeremiah 29 11 kind of speaks to this it says this uh, and then I'll tell you what the law is but the scripture for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me, and when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Now, the thing is, one of the key things is that uh, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, and for an expected end, for a successful end. So the first spiritual law goes like this. I've got L-P. What it says there, the first spiritual law is God loves you, loves you is the L, and he's got a plan for your life. That's the P. So he loves you and he's got a plan. That's the first thing. So when people are ministering, they want to they let people know, well, God loves you and he's got a wonderful plan for your life. And sometimes it becomes almost a running joke because people will say it so often, but they have no idea how to help people to, to lock into that plan. Although the next spiritual law is God loves you and he's got a wonderful plan for your life, but you have sinned or we have sinned as humanity has sinned, has sinned and we are separated from God. So the next uh, spiritual law is that you have you're a victim of sin and you're separated. So God loves you, got a wonderful plan for your life, but you sin and you're separated. The third thing is to understand Jesus is the only way out of this issue. Jesus is the only way out. So that's why the J O is there. So Jesus is the only way out. And then the next thing is RJ. And the RJ stands for receive Jesus. That's it. Those are the four spiritual laws. And this is what people will use. They'll have pamphlets on it. They've got tracks. They'll do um, training sessions in their schools of evangelism. But it's a very, very old approach and, and it can be very effective but what we need to be is more prophetic as we talk to people 
opening up these other areas, uh, as we've explained here tonight, through some of the things that, that, that Ruth has said. So, uh, having said that, let me get a little feedback on that. A little feedback on God loves you. He's got a wonderful plan for your life. You sin and you're separated, but Jesus is the only way out, and you got to receive Jesus. So, what are your thoughts? Um, I just want to ask this question. When you say more prophetic, can you elaborate on that? Yes, more prophetic meaning speaking to people. Um, prophecy is what? It is for edification, mm -hmm. education, and comfort. Right. And when you're talking to people, you can trust God to maybe give you something. Like everything that Ruth said, that was edifying. It was mm -hmm comforting it was and she said some things that exhorted the woman and so that's the prophetic side to be able to trust God to give you something that will edify the person or or build the person up that God will give you something that will comfort the person that God will give you something that will speak more of a motivation or an exhortation to respond towards God and, and that's where prophecy starts, you know, exhortation, edification, and comfort. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, that helps a whole lot. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's hear a little bit more of you here. Okay, is everybody muted? <laughs> Well, I like the use of the letters. It helps you remember, you know, what, what the steps are. So I'm I, actually writing it down right now. Yeah, I thought that would be useful. Rather than spell it all out, just remember the key words. Love, plans, and separated. Jesus is the only way. Receive Jesus. Yeah. So, what do you think? Um, what What do you think about telling people? Because Sylvia kind of brought this up. What do you think about telling people that God loves you and He's got a wonderful plan for your life? Have you ever said that to somebody? Many times. Absolutely. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we can, and probably more people would say yes, <laughs> we can, I say, step out in faith a little bit and trust God to give you a little bit more and, and maybe elaborate on some basic things of how God loves the person, what the plan is, that you, that you can sense for the person. Sometimes you look at an individual and they can be lost as all get out, but God will show you, I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what I'm seeing. The world may see something different, and they may see themselves very differently, but I'm going to show you what I'm seeing. That's prophetic. That's prophetic. A person may be looking at themselves like, well, I'm just this useless uh, person that people just tolerate. And then you come and you say, I see, I see something else. Mm -hmm. I see something more. And you begin to tell a person from God's perspective what you're seeing. And it helps to set the groundwork of God's got a wonderful plan for your life. And it begins by you seeing how God loves you and what he's got for you to take you out of this mindset because your mindset is working against you and he wants you to know what he thinks and that you should begin to think his thoughts and just help him. And then, well, how do I think God's thoughts? Well, let's go into the Bible. Let's talk about what God has actually said to all of us in Scripture and let's go through Bible. And ultimately, you can get to that place of, uh, I don't know, Acts 19.2, if they're a believer. Uh, receive the Holy Spirit, since you believe. Yes, or if they're not a believer, 
Um, do you want to see what God is giving? So, yeah. Hopefully all these things. So, um, can I share this with, in reference to what you're saying? Yes. So my mom, she was in another denomination. And uh, I had to go visit this. I had to go visit her uh, the weekend. And so when I got there, the Lord said, because my mom always had to have her her toast and coffee. And the Lord said, don't take, don't take the coffee and don't take the toast. So I went in the kitchen. She was sitting there. And so um, she, you know, she asked me to have the coffee and toast. And I said, no, not right now. So I went and sat up beside her. And the Lord said, tell your mother how much I love her. So I began to tell her how much the Lord loved her. And she kept saying, really? 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 I said, yes. I said, and the Lord wants to live in you. He wants you to receive the Holy Ghost. And I explained to her what the Holy Ghost was. So I laid my hands on her head. And the Lord, and I began to pray. And the Lord said, take your hand off of her head and put it on her stomach. And as soon as I put my hand on her stomach, my mother jumped up from the table, went off in the Holy Ghost. I had, I think she had to be in the Holy Ghost for a good hour. And she kept saying, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. So that, you know, that happened years ago, but I'll never forget that. Amen. 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 You said, you said, she said, I see what you mean. I see what you mean, right? She couldn't stop saying that. And she was in tongues for quite a while. <laughs> it reminds me, God rest her soul, of my mother, my mother, who resisted this for so long, for about nine months. And she was throwing everything out there that she could about she doesn't need it. It's not that important. So maybe a few people get it. And she, at one point, she was just like, nobody really speaks in tongues. And she went all the way from that to, well, maybe some people get it. And then the next thing I know, as, as you guys have heard me say this many times, after nine months of going back and forth with my mother, my sister calls me. Uh, my mom's received the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Right after... This is how. This is why God has you pray about things you don't know you need to pray for. Right after, I was heavily impressed by the Lord to start speaking in tongues for no apparent reason. It was like all of a sudden, pray in tongues now. And so I started praying in tongues, and I prayed in tongues for less than five minutes, and the Lord said, now you can stop. And as soon as I stopped, my first thought was, well, what was that all about? Within 30 seconds of me even thinking that, that's when the phone rang. It was my sister, and she's saying, Jeff's mom's talking in tongues. And so I said, get her on the phone. And this is what my mom said. I asked her two questions. I said, um, I said, Mom, has anything like this ever happened to you before? Because she, she wouldn't stop talking in tongues. And I said, just, just calm down for a second. And she kept wanting to keep going, but she did calm down for a second. I said, Mom, has anything like this ever happened to you? Uh, has anything like this ever happened to you before? She said, no, 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 no. I said, now do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> now I know. So that's, yeah, common response. Now I understand. Now I get it. Now I know. And that's what will happen with people if they will yield to the Spirit and let the Lord come and do what he does. As a matter of fact, Sylvia, just for the sake of everyone here, what you did is very much like what the Lord says here. He says in John chapter 7, verse 37, in the last day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, What? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And just to be clear what he's talking about, but this big he of the Spirit that they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But now Jesus is glorified, the Holy Ghost is given. So you can lay your hands on the head or you can lay your hands on the stomach 
Sometimes you'll see me putting my hands on people's belly and saying, out of the belly, let the river flow. So, yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> so, Pastor Jeff. Pastor Jeff? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, one of the reasons why I needed to send Sunday's message to this group is because there are a lot of intelligent people <laughs> in this group. I mean, high six figure, intelligent, prosperous, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And as, after ministering to them, they said, well, you know, it was for that time and I don't really need to, I, I already have the Holy Ghost. I said, but do you have the evidence of speaking in tongues? Did you receive the gift? And they were like, well, I mean, if it was a gift, he gave me the gift. So one, one lady in particular, who I love a lot, <laughs> sister in the Lord, says, I, if it's necessary, he would give it to me. And I said, well, he did give it to you. It's a gift. And I'm just saying, your message, when you came off, you said, I'm a pretty intelligent person. I just cracked up. Because <laughs> I said, this is what some of them needed to hear. Because they keep saying, if you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you know, call Sister Ruth, you know, Minister Ruth to help you out. And I'm like, dude, just, just speak, you know, like it's, I don't have to help you. It's already there, but I could, I could show you where the evidence of where it is real. It's in the word. You know, my first question is always, do you believe that what God did yesterday is still prevalent today? Do you believe his word is true? Or is he a God that lies? You know, I, I start off like that with believers because you're telling me you believe. Well, yeah. then if you believe, then let's go for it. But one of the things I wanted to tell you that I got a lesson this yesterday. And the lesson was this. I started getting concerned with God. I said, God, I can't reach Sister Martinez. Sorry, I said Rodriguez. Martinez, I, I'm, in, I'm in Delaware. I didn't have any cards printed with my number. You know, but then if she starts, Lord, I started with dad. I said, dad, if she starts, who's going to carry her? Who's going to show her the way to get baptized? Do I have to run back to New York, you know, for this, Lord? And, you know, he calmed me down. You know what he said? <laughs> some, some water, <laughs> some plant the seed, some water, and I give the increase. I was like, okay, cool. I get it. I get it. So what he wanted me to do was trust that whatever seed was planted, he's got it under control. And so a lot of times we're gonna plant seeds. And we may not see the evidence of it to come for fruition, to come to pass, but know that God has it. And that was the lesson I got Hi. yesterday. Amen. Anyway, just wanted to share that. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, anyone else? <laughs> This is yeah, when, when ministering to people, it's so so much. I mean, you can come from all through the New Testament. You can mainly the New Testament. You can come to people and share stuff with them. And one of the passages I just happen to be looking at is in John 14 that people say it. You hear it almost at almost every funeral, and that's uh, 14 one. Let yeah. not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. So you can you're able to elaborate that to the person that you're speaking to. And by the time you get finished with that, you can drop down to uh, verse six. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So that, that opens the door for a lot of discussion without offending the person. And you're able to minister to them. By the time you get finished, you you the Holy Ghost is, is waiting for you to be able to share with the person why they need the Holy Ghost. But uh, of course it comes from you spending time though. You have to be looking to spend time. And this is one of those episodes where you'd be looking to spend time with that person and willing to. Amen, amen. You know, it's, uh, this is kind of a major thing where Jesus says, um, I am the way, and when um, when the church began, 
uh, on the day of Pentecost, they weren't called Christians immediately. You all may know that. Uh, right. They were Christians until, well, Acts 26 of Acts. 24. Mm -hmm. They were first called Christians at Antioch. But you know what they were called before that? They were called people of that way. <laughs> that way. That way or the way. That's why you have a Bible. As a matter of fact, some folks caught on to that. Um, back in the 70s and the 80s and put out a Bible called The Way. And that's what Christians were. They were people of the way. And, and, what, and the reason I'm uh, stressing that is that people today, because there's so much information and they're heavily inundated with information that, that supposedly comes from a Christian perspective, people have their own way. It's kind of like people do that which is right in their own sight, <laughs> but they're not necessarily coming back to do it the way it is given in scripture and it would be very helpful to encourage people to make sure that whatever way that they're going that they know that they're doing it the way that Jesus wants it done not doing it the way that the denomination says but <laughs> doing it the way that Jesus said and the way that we know for sure we are doing it the way that he wants is when we're looking at what the apostles had the people do because they were being instructed have you ever noticed this Acts chapter 1 verse 2 it says until the day in which Jesus until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So he was taken up, but he continued to instruct them. He gave them the commandments of what needed to happen. So when Peter does this on uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, when the question came, um, verse 37 rather, now when they heard this and they were pricked in their heart and said, men and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter stands up and he gives them, this is under divine inspiration. This is why it's written in the scriptures. It's not written there so that we can just say, well, I read something about the early church. No, it's written there so we will follow the instructions and do it the way that everyone was commanded to do it. So when Peter stood up and he said, repent, he wasn't suggesting that they repent, he wasn't suggesting that they get baptized, and he wasn't suggesting that they receive the Holy Ghost. They were under divine commandment to do this. Mm -hmm. so the way is very important, and, and at times when you can find that conversation allows you to go in the direction of talking about the way. And it's appropriate, and you're not going to be blasting people, but you can kind of, you know, just uh, charm your way into a conversation to talk about, yeah, there's a way, there is a way that Jesus has. There's a way that all the apostles taught. There's a way that all the disciples of the apostles taught, and it was consistent. There was a way. So, anyway. So Jesus says, I am the way. So we better be very familiar with the way. Amen. 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 Anyone else? The, the mic is open. You can see I'm I'm just laying back and joining. Okay. I would I just want to share this. You know how the word says, trust in the Lord with all that heart and lean that into that own understanding. Yes. And you guys know that. Uh, the Lord has given me um, these acronyms and acronyms for witness, which we are, is willing to impart the truth needed to escape sin, to save the lost. Well, we've been talking a lot about that this evening. And I was reading in 1 Thessalonians 2, I think it was where Paul was saying something about God trusting us that to, to carry the truth out. And I really got blessed with that. So the Lord, I believe, is trusting us to, to carry the truth out. Amen. 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 He absolutely is. Amen. Absolutely is. I mean, 
We're ambassadors. The Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ. That means you are a representative in one place um, holding delegated authority from another place. And so with that delegated authority comes responsibility. Every believer needs to understand they're not called to be on the sidelines. They're called to be on the front lines. <laughs> and they have a responsibility that the Lord is expecting them to honor. Honor their responsibility. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, he is trusting us to get this word out here. I know that there might be a tendency in America to wait for pastors and others of authority, evangelists, teachers, uh, prophets, others, you know, elders, bishops, they bear the responsibility of getting that word out, and, and, and you know, on Sunday morning. But look, their whole purpose, that, that whole thing really should be about training the people. It's the people that go into the places that the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, elders, deacons, they'll never go. They'll never go to the places that you go. You've got to be that living word. And, you know, and you'll, you'll, you'll inevitably, inevitably run into people that will hear what you have to say, even though you might find 10 that won't. There's one that will. As a matter of fact, in these days, you might find five that will because people are hungry and they're looking for answers, and we've got them. Mm -hmm. well, the good thing is when Jesus sent the 70 out, he told them to go out and then he gave them conditions. Don't take nothing with you. So, which mean, to me, that means that he will give you the words to say when the time comes where you need to need to know what to say but he the main thing he wanted us to be willing to be obedient to his word and go out and he would do the rest for us and we have to believe and trust in that amen 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 and, 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 I, and I will quote this the verse which you just got to say to you pastor once our relationship with god has been restored we are then called to be ministers of reconciliation all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. So we have to understand we are ordained ministers by God. We don't need no uh, assemblies or Baptists or whatever to give us a ministry. We will have been already ministers from God himself. Christ himself has made us his own minister. So come on, let's get her done. <laughs> so that people can see it since, you know, we've talked about it. Amen. Oh, that's in 2 Corinthians 5. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Yes. I guess everybody can see it. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And there's a mouthful right there, but I see it is now 8.30. So I'm going to encourage everybody, you know why you're doing what you're doing to reach people. Understand your why. Understand the power of your own origin story in the Lord or your your personal witness, and then maybe you could tell people your work. Your work is to pray them through. That's that. It's the I call it the three W's: your why, your witness, and your work. So, all right. Uh, is there anything else before we conclude? I had a question. Okay, here's a question coming from here in the house. Um, one. What is there like anything specific we're supposed to be praying for for Israel? Um, praying, the, the constant prayer for Israel, one of them says pray for the peace, mm -hmm. but that peace is actually Jesus. Oh, yeah. He's the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. There can't be any peace until he's there. So one of the constants, according to scripture, uh, pray, pray for the heart of the people. Yes. Um, 
Verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Mm -hmm. So you can pray that, pray that evangelism can go forward there because at one point, maybe uh, within the last two months, they were looking at legislation to shut down any kind of ministry on the street of which you might suffer a penalty, a fine, or even jail time. In terms of Judaism or Christianity? Christianity. Christianity. Yes, they were coming against Christianity, oh, wow. but Netanyahu shut that down. <laughs> so pray for, for now. pray for them to have their eyes open. Pray for blindness to be lifted off of them. It's kind of like what we read there earlier um, when we were in, let's see, we were in, okay, Romans, where it says, that um, the rest were blinded. So we, we, you've got to pray for the blindness to be lifted. Mm -hmm. And there's things in the Old Testament that, that tell us about praying for Israel. Well, I just read one in um, 122. So that, and as far as the other things that we're praying for, we're praying for breakthrough, we're praying for, um, for the church, for people for purity mm -hmm. for the and, church as a whole the christian church yes okay. uh, for cfa too specifically okay. that for the people okay. that you're close to for purity and for the presence of god okay yeah so those are the things and 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 i believe yeah. that there's something big that's heading for the church mm -hmm. i just don't exactly know what it is but I, I think it's going to be very significant somebody was going to say something yeah, Sister Ruth, um, I, I have an intercessory prayer guide for Israel that I've had um, for several years now during our prayer time, and it's all scripture, and I'd like to send it to you, and maybe you could send it to the body if you approve of it. That's fine. Um, send it to Adrian. And, and it's, it's fine. Okay, I can do that. Ruth. It's one page, and um, it, it just starts off like this. I can say it real quick. Um, Lord, thank you that we've come to you and present these requests. We worship and praise you, Lord, because you are the God of Israel. And so, Father, we lift up Jerusalem and all of the people of the land of Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalms 122.6. We pray for the people of Israel to come and to know the Messiah, Yeshua, Psalms 47, Isaiah 53, for her, her borders to be secure. I'm reading in the dark, I'm sorry. Exodus 23, 31, and it goes on. It's just one page, but it gives you scripture and it gives you direction in what to pray for Israel. So this is the prayers. This is the scriptures I've been using over the years to pray for Israel along with the body of Christ. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you sent that to Adrian, Adrian will get that out to everybody. That's fine. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thanks. I was just looking for some direction on that. Oh, I don't want Adrian Jones or a your yes. wife. Jones. Adrian Jones. Yeah. I'm sorry, because that's. I think that's the only email I have. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'll send it. Uh, Ronnie said I could send it in a text. Okay. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> I had one other thing that I was going to mention, and um, wow, I do not, I don't recall what it was, but uh, anyway, <laughs> this tonight was good. I, I appreciate yes. the testimonies, mm -hmm. and um, I pray that everybody will have a testimony, that everybody will have prayed for someone. I would say over the next uh, couple of of weeks, uh, find somebody that you're just connected to and pray for them and pray for them to receive the Holy Ghost. And let's, you know, believe that God will do that and, and even more. The scripture says, he'll do abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that dwells in us. Uh, Pastor, could I share this right quick? Okay. And uh, I shared it with JJ. But when you were talking about walking to us, uh, one of those palms, um, 
um, business and just say, Jesus, well, this is all, this, this happened a long time ago. I think I had to drop JJ off at home. And I think she might have been middle school. We transitioned to high school. But we were driving along 202. <laughs> and there was this Palmer's uh, house. And so it was a nice day. And JJ, she saw it and she put a little hand out the window. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So I was like, so I was like wow. So then it had to be about a couple of weeks later or maybe a month because my uncle lived up there. So when I was going to visit my uncle, the whole building was down. Oh, wow. The whole building is down. So the Lord is no respect of age either. <laughs> Amen. I remember you sharing that. Amen. I'm going to say this. Maybe one day we'll talk about this more in depth. Um, there are some passages in Isaiah that talk about these last days, what God's going to be doing with Israel and the power of the church. So on one hand, I would like to um, have a protracted conversation about that. But the other thing I want to say is um, I don't know if it's a good habit. And I know I said it Sunday, but I'm, I'm going to say I don't know if it's a really good habit to go out looking for <laughs> devils to attack. <laughs> <laughs> that um, we should we should not go out looking for them when we find they're in our path we know what to do and the other thing that I'm discovering is that we we do have an authority to speak to demonic activity when it's in people but when we're starting to take um, steps beyond our our biblical authority. And we want to take on devils that are over cities. The princess. Prince, yeah. <laughs> we to be for trouble. <laughs> and there's a reason I'm saying that. There's a lot that, that I could be saying about that, but we're about to get off. So I just want to say that much. <laughs> I want to say that much. Let's stay with the people that are in our path. It's cool if we're, if we're buying a palm reader shop and we say, well, I rebuke that, you know. Uh, you know, you can do that, uh, but <laughs> to, to make it our business to go to go hunting down with and uh, sorcery shops and all of that, maybe we want to refrain from that. So, I just want to make sure I said that. It's on the record. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm trying to remember when they went out doing that and, uh, their clothes got torn off the disciples and got all beat up. Yeah, Apollos, I know. Paul, By demonic I know forces, you. so you're yeah. right. Be careful. You mean oh, we can't boy. go out and be demon slayers? <laughs> oh, gosh. Do it the right way, yeah. <laughs> you know, you. Of uh, course. I mean, you wouldn't go, <laughs> you wouldn't go half cops. <laughs> right. Just somebody just said so the people got their clothes tore off oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> better go right <laughs> Jesus I know, Paul, know I know but who are you right exactly oh yeah well we already know what to expect when you don't go right <laughs> you know, go, go out there ill prepared you don't think going to get hashtag come help me <laughs> <laughs> pretty I got Pretty, no, I won't do it tonight, but I got some pretty serious stories about people that that were going that direction and they got in trouble because they exceeded the boundary of their authority. <laughs> and that, you know, we can make all kinds of decisions, but God tells us to use wisdom as we're doing these things. And um, you know, anyway, okay. that could be related to a very long story, so I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> You're going to say this on Sunday, right? I don't know if I'm going to say it Sunday. I might say it in another Bible study where we can break it down, but we'll see. I'll probably have to clean up what I said last Sunday. Though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> All right, but get the word out there. Don't go, don't go help a man. <laughs> don't form any clubs or anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, so uh, on that note, I guess we can close out. If somebody would like to close us out, in a, a brief word of prayer, that would be great. 
Father, we thank you for this night that you've allowed us to come together and to open up the word and just to get, get and draw closer to you and each other. I thank you, Father, for the participants that's online tonight. We pray for those that had the desire to be, but for some reason they weren't online tonight. I pray that they have peace in their spirits, wherever they might be. And we thank you for the pastor being the head of this fellowship. Thank you for him leading us into the word this night. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Well, I thank you, Father, and pray that as this night go forth, that we will all have peace in your name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, folks. Have a great rest of your week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all Sunday. Mm -hmm. okay. Good night. Amen. God bless you all. God bless. God bless. Good night. Good night. God bless you. Enjoy you guys. God bless you. Bye-bye.